Y cuando ese milagro realiza el prodigio de amarse Hay campanas de fiesta que cantan en el corazón Es muy, muy diferente, muy, es muy grande la diferencia de las canciones de hoy en día para las que cantamos nosotros. Porque cada quien cree que su época de, de uno es la mejor. Es la para uno es la mejor. No. Y para ellos la época de Dios es la mejor. Cuando me dejes de A lot of stories where my grandmother, my godmother would talk about coming to the dances here in Martinez Town. Uh, folks they knew, they would point out houses like along Edith, people that they knew. And and this is, you know, when I moved in here, uh, it's been well, well, well over 20 some years for me and my husband, uh, 24 years. Uh, my godmother could still point out where the dance hall was at and, and they would come all the way from Barelas to the dances here and then they would hit the, the old neighborhoods. Parelas, Martinez Town, then go to the dances in, in uh, Old Town. Real interesting to hear how those three neighborhoods, the young people went that way. Uh, there was a large tent that uh, housed a lot of people actually. And that's where they actually did their dances for the fiesta. And um, they would charge 10 cents a dance. And uh, that would, the tent, the, the reason for the, the, the fee, the 10 cents, is to pay for the, the band, okay? So that's how the band got paid. And the band consisted of a guitar, accordion, and, uh, uh, maybe some drums, uh, bass, bass. A trio? Or it could be a trio, quartet. it could be a quartet. And depending on, uh, on who, who came you know, to play it, you know, sometimes you would just have three people. But everybody had a good time, including yourself. Oh well, I was I was very young then, yeah, including myself, uh, because you know the, we were encouraged to go and uh, participate in these dances because it's it's tradition. It was mostly northern New Mexico type of music, and um, so we would dance, uh, uh, you know, what what is now known as the rancheras, but it was a different sort of. A, a dance step, if you will, and in those days, you know, the we didn't have any mariachis, so we we never did have any mariachis during the time we had the fiestas here. Uh, Eloy Baca, he he was he he liked to play music, and he had a bunch of the kids in the neighborhood that learned learned uh, from him. Uh, down at the other house that he had, he called it a combo room. It was just a room that he'd insulate it or he'd put uh, soundproofing on it. And they used to get together. And all I remember is Johnny Moya and him and Mike Cedillo playing at the fiestas for a coronation. And that was about 1953. The only reason I remember is we just bought a, my dad had just bought a brand new Mercury. 1953 Mercury. You know, one thing I, I, I always remember about Las Fiestas here at San Ignacio, I asked my son-in-law, I said, find mi pecosita. And he used to hear it over here, la, la carpa de sadia. That's what they used to call the, they used to have a tent out there. And I don't know what they paid to dance, a dime or whatever, but I always remember that it's a real lively song. And I didn't think you could find it. But ni pecosita. And it's, it's just music. It's not, not vocal. And he found it. But nowadays, man, with, with, with all that uh, electronics, and he punches it up, and it's being done by 10 guys, you know? The fiestas were well attended. I mean, when you had a fiesta in Martinez Town, it would be a three-day affair, three or four-day affair, Old Town the same way, and, and people from all the 
communities around would come to the fiestas. Fiestas were a big deal. Mm -hmm. They're not anymore. They're more religious. People are home watching the ball game now. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a totally different. Um, and, and what you would have at a fiesta, besides music and, and the religious part and dances, I remember Martinez town, there'd be three dances going on the same evening. There'd be two halls with dancers, and there'd be the, the, the most popular used to be what they call El Baile de la Carpa, the, the dance at the tent. Hmm. And there you paid by the, you paid, you know, by the, by the, by the dance. You know, as you get out and dance, and then somebody would come collecting the nickel uh, they, they have a short intermission. They stop the music, and uh, they wouldn't turn. Uh, they wouldn't start playing again until until the um, until the people the, the the money was all collected, and uh, then they would continue playing. And a lot of the kids, neighborhood kids, myself and and your, your I don't know if you remember your cousin Dennis brothers brothers uh, brother. Oh, your yes, yes. Yeah, he and I used to get jobs with the carpa collecting collecting money. You know, we collect the money, and then there'd be some guy there taking all the money in, and then at the end of the evening, you know, they would pay off the musicians. En ese entonces los tenían ahí donde tienen ahora el el labor department. Estaba un lote ahí que no, no había casas, no había nada, y ahí, y ahí ponían todos los, uh, los, uh, los rides, ¿no? Los, uh, las carpas para los bailes. Ahí también venían de allá unas, unos muchachos uh, que se llaman uh, García, ¿no? El Steve García, ¿cómo se llamaba el otro? Rubén y Anita García. Ortiz, 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 y ahí, eh, eran trapicistas, cantantes. I was raised in a little town called Hatch, New Mexico, the green, green chili capital of the world. And we were, came from farmers. My dad had a farm there, and, and we used to pick cotton and hoe cotton and grow chili and, and all kinds of things. And uh, the big entertainment is that once in a while, the Ortiz family would come through town and they would go through town with a bullhorn and, and speakers on an old car and they would say, there's, there's going to be a show here somewhere. We used to call them maromeros. Maromeros, the word mar, maroma means you, 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 uh, you, you do tricks, you, you jump like uh, acrobatic. And uh, we used to call them maromeros. And it was not really a very complimentary name, sort of. You know, we used to tell each other, oh, tú eres un maromero, you know, you're just a maromero. But uh, they were very good entertainers, and they came to town and several times. And uh, there was no entertainment per se in those years, so we would all pay a dime or 15 cents, and we go see los maromeros. In this case, it was Mr. Jose Ortiz, who was the Ortiz brothers and sister's father. And he was a clown. He used to dress up as uh, Don, uh, what was his name? Uh, He's, uh, he had a name. I forget. I'll think about it later on. And then he would do his bit. And then uh, the guys, or Steve and, oh, by the way, Steve, uh, uh, Ruben was also a ventriloquist. And I'm sure he still is. And he had a puppet called Don Lolo. And he would come out and say all kinds of things and entertain the crowd. And then Steve would sing. And then they would get together, Anita, Steve, and Ruben, and form a trio, and they would also sing within the show. It was a very entertaining thing, and we were thrilled to death to go see the show because there was no entertainment per se in those small towns. So we, that's the first time I met them, and I was uh, maybe 14, 15, 16 years old. Come on. Come on. We got 10 more. Church, but we ring that bell. <laughs> the Catholic Church is, is recorded. I know it is. 
bells. Yeah. In fact, somebody rang the bell and rang it too high, and it stuck, and so they had to get some men up there to get it undone. You know? No, never went to any of the fiestas. No. See, that was, kind of Catholic. that was a Catholic thing. And this is a story about my mother-in-law was from Albuquerque. And I mean, she could name every fiesta in the 30s. You know, she was born in 1919. And, and every, every fiesta, she knew all the communities here. In fact, when I told her I was going to a church in Martinez Town, she was shocked because this was, she considered this to be a rough area. <laughs> Even back in the 30s. 30s. The 30s, yeah. She said, oh, yeah, we would all be having, every fiesta was having a good time, and everybody, somebody always got stabbed at Martinez Town, and she was shocked that I was coming to church here, you know. But she was a Catholic, and there was, it was a big deal. The fiestas were a big thing. But our church was not involved in those. The what fiestas. I remember about the fiestas is, we had this girl that used to work for us, and uh, she was a pretty strong girl, man. She was she was used to working. And one year, they said this woman, this girl from Old Town, was gonna come and beat up every all the girls in Martinez Town or something. I don't something to that effect. There was a gang fight or something. She got up against this girl, and this girl that used to work for us beat the crap out of her, man. And that's what I remember by La Fiesta. It used to be like territorial. You, people from Barelas or people from Old Town couldn't come over here. They were, it would be a fight. Men and women, I mean, it used to be, well, kids and women, I guess you'd say, there used to be shootings. Over the different boundaries. Over crossing boundaries. That was in the when? 50s. Early 50s. Early 50s. Yeah, because after about 53, 54, I didn't go back. We used to spend summers up in the mountains, so I didn't go to the fiestas. But I used to go to the fiestas up there in all those little villages. Yeah. They used to have, man, there was a fiesta every weekend up in uh, yeah. San Antonio, San Antonito, uh, Isarra. Dad used to uh, uh, ride corridos. Uh, Probably some of his best known were the Corrido, of, El Corrido de Dennis Chavez. It was a, a campaign uh, corrido. A corrido was basically a ballad that told the story of the individual. And uh, um, in, in, in those years, in the early years of New Mexico, uh, uh, politicians, especially they were running for a major office, would have a corrido. And the corrido was used uh, primarily uh, uh, as an introduction to the candidate when they went to rallies. For example, if they were holding a rally at the fiestas in, in one of the neighborhoods, one of the communities, uh, before, the, before the candidate was introduced, usually a band, a, a trio, or several musicians, something akin to a mariachi, it was more like a like one of these Norteña type of bands, you know, a whole, a whole cross section of musicians would get up and they would sing, they would sing the corrido. I can still remember, for example, the, one of the, the verses of Dennis Chavez. It went something like this: Chavez, 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 otra vez de senador. senador. En noviembre votaremos y otra vez lo llevaremos al senado triunfador. That was that was the chorus, and then they would go on and tell the story about how Dennis Chavez grew up poor in, in, in a rural area and how he educated himself. California, because they didn't have any recording studios in New Mexico, so we went down there where they where Tito Guisar, uh recorded the recorded the. The, the Chavez Chavez. Tito Guisar was a, was a movie star, Mexican movie star, that used to also do bit parts in Hollywood and was a singer, also besides being a movie star. 
Justa razón, hoy lo critica la prensa, pero un pueblo agradecido será su defensa. Every community had somebody defensa. like that, and they would compete against each other at fiestas. There was a, there was a, a well-known poet who was, uh, who from Cuba, who everybody claimed was the champion in New Mexico, and he and my dad had competition. Uh, at the fiestas in Cuba. My dad was 19 at the time, and my dad beat him. And actually, the, the gentleman, and I, he writes, a, his opponent writes about that, and I have the, I have the words to that poem where he uh, talks about how my dad had, had defeated him in, in that competition. Yeah, it's very meaningful. I mean, it, it's hard to believe that he was my grandfather and that he did this. And, I somehow have managed to salvage um, some of the broadsides that he had. Who knows what's out there that was never published or that we lost copies of, but I'm sort of the, the keeper of the poems. A Nuevo México no olvidarán el país donde han nacido. En su mente llevarán los días que aquí han vivido. Por su patria pelearán a la cual han respondido. Se recuerdan de su país con sus lugares celosos. This is Luis Martinez. He was the president of the credit union, El Porvenir it was called. And this is my grandfather. He was, I guess, vice president, I don't know. Uh, he was the oldest son of the original Martinez, and uh, he, uh, he wanted to go to college or to uh, uh, a school in Kansas City, and he told his father that he needed some money to pay for the tuition, and uh, he wanted to become a poet. That's what I heard them say. He says, No sé qué voy a hacer con Luis. Quiere ir para Kansas City a estudiar para hacer un poet. Poet? <laughs> That's something like that, he said. <laughs> and uh, you can't make a living, raise a family. Uh, being a poet, he, uh, my dad told uh, uh, Mr. Martinez, the original Martinez, uh, well, if whatever he wants to study, it, it's worth the money. Let him go and send him to school in Kansas City. And he did go to Kansas City and he studied and he uh, really uh, uh, did a good job of learning. <laughs> and uh, when he came back, he was uh, writing songs. He became a poet, and he put it into music. And uh, he did a great job of uh, doing a lot of uh, uh, music for the Villao family. He, he wrote a poem about my dad. He wrote a, a corrido for Eloy Vaca, my uncle, in the Second World War. There's a corrido that was written by him, and also a record was done. My uncle Lika used to play the saxophone, the clarinet, the piano, uh, the guitar, and and uh, he said, he, my dad would say, yeah, you don't have to learn none of that. Just pay attention to your studies. He read the Bible, but he used to say, don't discuss the Bible or politics. <laughs> and he did. His father? My father. No, but his father, 
Oh, his father. He was I don't a Bible know. reader too. His father was. They say he was a character. They say uh, he died in 1935. I think it was. I think that's what they told me. It was my sister's seventh birthday. Um, around that time, anyway. Um, but they say he used to make almost anything he could see. He could copy. He used to make violins. He used to play the harmonica. He was a jokester and a half. What the music that I listened to was the music that my mother played. I I grew up listening to to each his own and uh, in English in, in English and Spanish. Yeah. And uh, solamente una vez, you belong to my heart. You know. And then Pat Baca used to sing all that stuff all the time. He's the only one I used to hear, him and Fidel. And then they'd serenade us every once in a while, maybe Christmas, Thanksgiving, I don't know, but it seemed to, like it was always a special holiday. They'd get plastered and go around the neighborhood. In the streets, singing. Uh -huh. Yeah. We got, we started doing that, oh, I guess in the early 80s. We'd go and have we'd have a Christmas party over at my mother-in-law's, and then we'd go and serenade the 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 neighborhood, Las Mañanitas. And uh, uh, this is Las Islas Filipinas, uh, written by Luis Martinez, and the music uh, the music that went with this particular ballad was was uh, was composed by. Uh, my dad's cousin, Felipe Martinez. En las Islas Filipinas, 1940, en uno tenemos presente que el imperial del Japón nos asaltó de repente. Día 7 de diciembre se estremeció el mundo entero que el imperial del Japón nos mostrará traicionero. Nuevo México querido no da su brazo a torcer Tiene soldados valientes que cumplen por su deber. Pues el Martínez no más ellos. El Martínez no más ellos. Que yo sepa, que yo me acuerde. No más Felipe Martínez, Luis Martínez y mi papá, Santiago Martínez. Uh, Santiago Martínez. Y Luis es su... Son Luis, primos. Primos de él. Son y los, los, uh, las canciones uh, estaban escritas por... We had musicians in our, in the family, um, uh, mostly people who played uh, accordions. As a matter of fact, there's a picture of uh, local people in our neighborhood that led uh, the procession of uh, the wedding march. And, you know, people would actually get married at the church and then uh, the receptions would be held at the house, not at the hall, but they would come home and they would have the receptions there, and the music would be played in the uh, the parlor, the living room, if they had one. If not, uh, you know, if there was a nice day, we'd be outside. The unique thing about this type of wedding is not only the march, but before they got married, the custom here in Martinez Town, in Santa Barbara, actually, was that we would bring in a, a lady that would sing the life of the bride and the life of, of the uh, groom mm -hmm. Bef and she would then give them to each other that was like their engagement and it was you know they, they would actually she, she would be prepped you know just like a matchmaker you know like the, the Jewish people have the matchmaker mm -hmm. well we had this lady that would come in and and she would do the entrega you know here is so and so and this is his life, and he's going to marry this lady, and this is who she is, and and that's this is her life, and she would sing it, mm -hmm. you know. That's the way it was. Um, that happened to me. I mean, when I got married in '67, wow. yeah, at my house. At your engagement. At my engagement, yeah. That was the last time that I ever had. I've seen it.
from what I gather the venues beforehand were just like weddings and church fiestas where you just had violin and guitar and that was your music for everything that took place in the village. In um, 1990 I went to Bernalillo's Matachinas because a friend of mine Rob Cisneros was a monarca. He's the one that dances with the Malinche. And I went to see him dance, and at that time there was one violin player and one guitarist. So I just thought it would be a shame if anything ever happened to that violin player, the music could be gone. Because in the, in the 90s you didn't have cell phones. In 1990 that cell phones were not recording video and, and sound the way they are today. So I don't know if there was any recordings of that music back then. So I talked with Charles Aguilar, who was the violin player, and asked him if I could learn the music and start playing with him. And that way in the event, if anything happened to him, then there'd be somebody else who could continue the tradition. So that was in 1990, and I still play with him today. Some of the violin players now in Bernalillo, I taught them by ear. I would just go to their home, and I would play the music, and they would just listen to it and try it, and I would you know, tell them what notes to play. So I've taught the music to the, to the younger generation by ear, and they'll be around when I can no longer play. So we gotta keep the, keep the youth interested. In Bernalillo, there's a big interest in the youth. So that's a, a tradition that'll never die in Bernalillo. There's other little villages around New Mexico where the Matachinas don't play anymore because it's just kind of faded away. In Alcalde, where, where we used to go, there was a couple of years where there was no interest and they came very close to, to not having them anymore. And then somebody got the younger generation interested again and now they're starting to flourish in Alcalde. You know, uh, when I came to Albuquerque, and even before then, I call this like folk music. You know, when you listen to people like from northern New Mexico, or people from Martinez Town, or people from they gather and they're, they're not really professional singers per se. They're very good, but they haven't gone to a, a, a university or studied whatever. They grab the guitar and they sing from their heart. And, uh, and they gather the, the comadre with the compadre or, or the family, and they would sing. Uh, this is, to me, this is, more like, this is more like folk music. And uh, they were very good. My, my family was, were folk singers as well. But then uh, from there you ex go to other groups, and you end up listening to that, and it's good. But it's more of a local type of performing. And then you go to the more professional, which is the mariachi groups, and more conjuntos uh, that actually play for dances or whatever. And, uh, and music starts to evolve. Uh, when, when, when you're talking the difference between even Tex-Mex and New Mexico, where Tex-Mex is a combination of, a, usually what you get is an immigrant who's come across to the Texas border and experienced some American culture, and then is singing the Mexican music with it. And he's adding that Texas flavor, that new American flavor to it. That's kind of what Tex-Mex. But New Mexico, not, they have developed their own culture here. And so they take maybe what is a Mexican song, and then they've translated it to fit their style, their life, their life experiences here in New Mexico. New Mexico music is uh, more original. It uh, talks about family the hardships they went through coming up. It um, involves their, their grandpas, their grandmas, and their dads and their moms, and all the family being raised, uh, a lot of times in poverty. Their style of music is, has more, more beat to it. More, it's more lively. If you go to one of their dances, you're gonna get up and dance because their music is that good. And it brings, takes, Brings the best out of you. The rap. Well, rap. I tell I tell my grandsons. Um, even I could be a a famous singer. If I have to just say repeat two three words. I could do that. And what's what does he say? Huh? What does he say? Oh, Grandpa. 
<laughs> and, and I remember, I remember my, 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 my grandparents and my parents, my, 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 my father would come home from a hard day working on the railroad and he'd come to, you know, to chop wood, uh, to carry water, and he'd be whistling. He'd be whistling a song, happy. And my mother, the same way with the radio, she'd be making tortillas and doing whatever and had the radio and be singing. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know of very many cultures that have that. Cantando con mi abuelito en un lado de nuestra iglesia. Canto por funerales, le canto a la gente por sus cumpleaños y mucha gente me conoce en de chiquito que cantaba yo en la escuela, pues me crié con mi grandpa cantando y él me enseñó todo lo que él me enseñó él. Y él ese hombre se llamaba Albino Gómez de las tablas. Yo voy a hacer lo que me dijo mi abuelito, aprende todo lo que tiene, puedes aprender para que no tengas que trabajar por nadie y para que puedas vivir una vida feliz. Y sigue tu música, me dijo. Y no andes cantando canciones de otra gente, porque eso me quiere decir a mí que tú puedes cantar esa canción mejor que ellos y eso no está bien. Haz tus canciones y canta tus canciones y ponlos en un CD o lo que quieras, pero no vas a andar cantando canciones de otra gente. So, por eso yo he escrito toda mi música y la música que he escrito es de la plebecita o es de mis abuelitos y les canto para que me perdonen por lo mal que les hice. Ya ellos están en otro mundo, pero ellos saben que yo le doy gracias a Dios que yo pude mirarlos antes de que ellos fueran. A Dios le pido licencia para cantar este alabado en el honor de San Antonio, en el favor de los soldados. Si mi hijo viene bien, te la digo con, con firmeza. Cuando termine la guerra, te cumplo con la promesa. And then another paragraph reads, pues, pues a mi hijo que anda ausente lo proteja la medalla te lo, te lo encargo San Antonio los libres de la batalla I believe it was the one that he wrote uh, for my two older brothers when they first went into the army you know it was a prayer it was a prayer to St. Anthony asking St. Anthony to bring them home safely is what, what the prayer was all about and uh, and and of course Um, unfortunately, one of, one of those two brothers didn't make it back. He, he died in Europe, uh, killed in the, at the Battle of the Bulge. Ya me voy para siempre. Cantábamos yo y mi mamá cuando teníamos 6, 7 años. Ella lavaba platos y nosotros los secábamos cantando todo el tiempo. Y siempre andamos cantando, ¿no? Sí. Se le va la onda a uno, ¿no? Cuando tiene que pensar de algo. Ya. Yeah. Um, no me acuerdo de alguna que sepa ella. What I keep getting is uh, por un amor. Por un amor. He llorado gotitas de sangre. My mother had a beautiful soprano voice and my father was some kind of a tenor voice. 
And as I was growing up, they would sing the alabados because we used to pray the rosary every evening uh, with the family. And many of the alabados were sang by my dad and my mom and uh, uncles and, and, and aunts and the community that got together. We would have the rosary one evening at my house and then the next evening at the neighbor's house and we would go around the community. And uh, I was very impressed with the way my mother and my father and many of the older uh, generations sang these alabados. Oh Maria, Madre Mia, Oh consuelo del mortal, ampararme y guiarme a la patria celestial, ampararme y guiarme a la patria celestial. There's just something about singing that's just, you know, so uplifting and and to sing, you know, even if, and I think the congregation does a really good job of singing, you know, I think, I think the people really enjoy singing. And I never mind having three hymns, you know, and I feel like if we don't have an anthem, let's sing four hymns, make them, get them to sing, you know what I mean? And I think, I think for the most part they enjoy the, the singing and the organ and you know, a lot of, uh, old, of the older people say, you know, I, I, I like organ music, I like piano, but I do like the organ, and they, they like to hear the organ, you know. And when I was a kid, this, yeah, this was packed, this church was packed, and, and Reverend Candelario even was on, you know, uh, tele, was on the radio, I mean, you know, they, yeah, you know what I mean, they had it, you could listen to it on the radio, back, you know, in Spanish. And so it has been around for a long time. And the bells have been ringing. Carmen's really good about if somebody has, you know, plays an instrument uh, in the high schools and middle schools, she will get them and she, she'll accompany them and practice with them and they play for church and, you know, they're very much appreciated and she'll yeah. do everything for the youth to get them involved with that and some of them uh, uh, are in the adult, you know, they're in the choir, you know, it's just the adult choir, they're, they're in high school, but they're in the choir, and they help us quite, you know, quite a bit, so uh, we do, we do have that. their interests are with contemporary music. You know, like some of the older hymns, they're okay, but there's a lot of new hymns that have wonderful words, you know, and have uh, catchy tunes, and I don't try to spring stuff on people, you know, but, but once they hear it a couple of times, because at a, there was a time when they, they would have sung Amazing Grace every Sunday. <laughs> If possible. In fact, I think they translated it 
in the new in this in the blue Spanish hymn book from the old and changed some of the Spanish words and it upset some of the people that had grown up with the old words in Spanish, you know. Amazing way, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was once a child, but now And of course, there's um, teenagers that love to dance, and of course, um, we dance to some wonderful music. I love to dance, it's a very good exercise for me. And uh, we do have very good bands here in New Mexico that uh, if you're not a dancer, if you hear that music, you will become a dancer. Aha. Uh -huh like the music of the Hurricanes, and they've been around for a long time. And they still have it all together. Everybody here, you are true Al Hurricane fans, right? At the and he's still, of course, he he has spawned a whole, uh, the whole plan. <laughs> They have, they're telling their story in, in layman's terms, uh, associating it with their life, with their age group, that 30-something, 40-something. The, the things like what you see now, like Darren Cordova, and those kinds of groups didn't exist. Um, uh, people like Hurricane, I, I can't remember any local groups that were as popular as uh, Hurricane Sanchez. Is. I went to school with Hurricane. He was a, a year or two ahead of me and in, in junior high school. And at every assembly, we had to listen to Hurricane sing. Uh, Hurricane, he would be dressed up as a charro and go out with his guitar at every assembly. 
and sing, and he would sing two, a couple of songs, and then he wanted to sing another one, and the kids didn't want him because the kids wanted to hear Fats Domino. They wanted to hear the rock and roll. Teenagers in my day did not take the Mexican music very well. They, they did for the fiestas and go that, but that not, was not their favorite music. Their favorite rock and roll by the early 50s and the late 40s had already taken root in the, in the, in the Hispanic, in the Mexican American communities. And there's no way that, uh, that, uh, that you know, they were gonna let somebody do dominate the assembly. I remember when I came to Albuquerque back in 1954, 55, when I was just a kid, they had mariachi groups. And also they have little groups playing here and there. And then it turned out that then the whole sound started to change little by little. Next thing you know, you got the, uh, the tropical beat, you know, the, uh, the cha-cha-chas and all that stuff. And, and then that kind of died away and they went into salsa. And then in, somewhere in between there, somewhere around 55, 56, we ended up with rock and roll. And a lot of, lot of groups were playing rock and roll. In Clay, El Hurricane, I remember, he used to play with Fats Domino and, and he was very good. No, I didn't go to dance until the Civic Auditorium. That was 1956-57. That's when the uh, Little Richards and the Fats Domino and the Lloyd Price, they used to come, and that's when I used to go. But I was 13, 14 years old. I saw Frank Sinatra there, oh. singing Young at Heart, and then they threw us out because it was very formal. The uh, matinee, people were dressed in, in long dresses and tuxedos and what have you, and they went to go see Frank Sinatra, and we had just finished a baseball game across the street at the boys club, and we snuck in. <laughs> well, they noticed that we, we didn't match the rest of the people that were there, so they asked us to leave. <laughs> but I heard him sing Young at Heart. Professional people started coming, you know. But I remember I went to a, a Shirley and Lee and a bunch of, of, of uh, musicians were coming in, uh, a bunch of singers, and I asked my father if I could attend. He says, well, I'll take you. Well, you're a teenager. You're not going to be seen with your father, you know. So we, a bunch of the kids got together and walked up there. And snuck in, or? Mm hmm? And snuck in? No, we paid. <laughs> it wasn't very much. We used to have a door rigged up that we could sneak into. <laughs> At the auditorium? At Civic Auditorium, yeah. <laughs> or we'd, they'd have security guards, you know, and the guy would pretend like he was sneaking over over there in the other end, and a bunch of us would fly this end, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see the Civic, how it was made? Yeah, yeah, I've seen well the pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, there used to be doors around and going around like that, you know. We pretend like we we're break sneaking in over there. <laughs> we already had this one rigged up. <laughs> it was all, everything was rock and roll. And on Sundays they'd have dances. They'd bring in like Lloyd Price or and some of the uh, the local bands would play, you know, like. Tiny Maury and Al Hurricane. Yeah, I think uh, Elvis Presley was <laughs> more popular. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and for you, that was. Yeah. You liked Elvis Presley. Yeah. Right? So there, there was a real change in, in music. In, in music. Uh -huh. But the older folks, like my parents, they loved the. Spanish music and the, the rhythm of the uh, accordion and the guitars. And my sister, now she loved music. She uh, used to have a boyfriend and uh, they were zoot suitors in those days. And Fito's Restaurant, which is now the Borales Coffee House, 
their son was Fito, and they named their restaurant Fito. And uh, uh, there were lots of nightclubs around, and he always played in the nightclubs. Even the old town society hall had uh, uh, the boys all lined up in the, on the wall and waiting, and the girls too, and they were waiting for the men to invite them. But I never, I never got invited. <laughs> But you went. Well, I went with my sister. She's the musicist and she's the, the dancer. <laughs> and uh, uh, after the, the bars, uh, not the bars, the, the nightclubs, because there were nightclubs, uh, closed at 2 o'clock, uh, the Fito would take the whole band and their girlfriends of the of the musicians to Fito's restaurant. It was the Barales Coffee House later on. And their parents uh, fed the musicians and, and, and their guests. <laughs> the most, probably the mo best known that I remember that came to Albuquerque all the time was Lalo Guerrero, but he, he performed primarily popular Mexican uh, music and not none of the local, none of the local stuff. But he did mostly dances. You know, they would have a, if there was a, a major holiday like uh, uh, New Year's, there would always be Lalo Guerrero would be doing New Year's or whatever the occasion was. They would come in on tour, and um, there weren't many more than that. Um, most of your performances were at the oh, fiestas. Like Tiny Mori and El Hurricane. Th those were the local bands, you know, but they were playing rock and roll. Now we say, well, it's our heritage. That's what we like. But, like, my wife doesn't like that kind of music. She likes the long haired Mexican music, like Javier Solis, Jose Alfredo Jimenez, you know, the local stuff she doesn't care for. I like the local stuff because that's the stuff you can dance to. And I can probably, I, I listen to, that's what I listen to. I have the honor of being the only show in Spanish that was nationally syndicated. Before me, there were other shows. The one, actually only one in, in New Mexico, and that was the, or, with the Ortiz trio, Ruben, Steve, and, uh, and uh, what's their six? Anita. And they call it the Ortiz Review. They were on Channel 13. And when I was a freshman at, at UNM, I used to watch them on TV all the time. And I, I admired them. I liked I liked the way they sang. They were very good. But uh, later on, uh, when I started my TV show, by this, by this time, the Ortiz trio went to bigger and better things. They appeared with uh, uh, Jackie Gleason, The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. And, uh, they were with Letterman. They would play Las Vegas many times, the Latin in Las Vegas. They did Cuando Calienta el Sol with Steve, uh, with, uh, Steve, uh, what's Steve Allen. They recorded with Steve Allen. In fact, you can still find it in the internet. I, saw, I heard it the other day. So they did make some good records. And they made a song that Steve Ortiz wrote called Vuelve a Mi. They, re they started recording for RCA which is a, who records for RCA in those years? Only Elvis Presley or, or some of the big names. And they were recording for RCA. So I've always been very proud of them. Everything overlaps in music. It's not you stop here and you start here. It overlaps. The, the, the folks music starts into, actually starts with the corrido because all the little towns had little corridos. You know, about some local guy and El Corrido de Cesar Chavez and El Corrido de God Knows What. And next thing you know, That song was very sencillo, 
Very simple. It was for the, from the kids. It started from the kids. So it says something about um, uh, la gente de la gente de Martinez Town ha luchado por por su gente porque su gente es el es uh, el tesoro del Martinez Town es su gente y es me recuerdo como los niños enfatizaban en la gente y es que en realidad eso lo entendieron cómo había tantos persona, personas personas uh, líderes en la misma comunidad que, que, que eran los papás, las mamás, los abuelos, los, los sacerdotes también que se involucraban en defender a su, a su, a su comunidad, en, uh, en elevarla, en defender este, sus tradiciones cuando se enfrentaron a la, a la, a la urban renewal, ¿no? How they enjoyed singing those lines stronger and stronger. They're really getting to this. I mean, the kids do wonderful things on stage.